Yo, Steve here. How you doing? Um, I've, it's too much to write. It's just that's all it is. Um, I, didn't, I don't want to do. I don't want to do another video. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy doing these, but there's just too much to write today. Um, I've, I can't fucking. I can't do it. I can't keep up. <laughs> Not today, anyway. Um, I've been looking into this Matt Folder story, obviously, because it's been highlighted in the news today. Uh, the dude's got 30 years or 30 plus years for all the disgusting stuff that he's done. Um, and it deservedly so. I mean, he should have his head chopped off. They all should. So I wanted, to, I wanted to go into the finer points of it and what the media is not telling you about. Because there's some certain, there's a fair bit that you, you need to know. Um, because I'm not, what I'm going to, what I'm going to tell you is not done out, not done to shock you. I'm not doing it. It's not clickbait. I'm not, I don't want to reveal the most shocking um, details of the story to, to create interest. It's not about that. What it's about through following the child abuse inquiry, I've I've discovered um, some of the ways in which they they're luring our children, particularly online, um, to be involved in these websites and to entice these scumbags like Matt Falder um, and a couple of a few other people that I'm going to name later on. Um, they're enticed by that, so yeah, it's just. It, uh, these ways that they're, they're doing, I mean, there's reports of them tasering kids now in Birmingham, tasering kids and taking them off. I mean, that, Birmingham's about to blow up with what's it's, what's what's happening there. Uh, apparently, it's like the next Rotherham. So you're going to be hearing plenty more from Birmingham. So this won't be the last. This is literally like the, the, the tip of the iceberg for that place because that place is riddled with paedophiles from what I've read today. Um, I'm going to stick a load of links in this, obviously, below, down there. Um, there's going to be a load of links um, because Birmingham's infested, and that is going to—it's going to rock you. Well, it's not going to rock the UK to the core. I mean, how can we rock? How can we be rocked to the core any more than we or, than we already have, or we already should be, with Jimmy Savile and all the rest of them? We should already be tearing down the tearing down the gates at Marine Number Ten and asking him what's he doing because notes be being <laughs> bugger all's being done. Yeah, they're supporting it, funding it. Yeah. End of, end of. The government supports paedophilia, and we will have it no other way. Yeah, if you want to challenge me, anyone wants to challenge me on that, yeah, go on, try it, absolutely try it. Um, anyway, Matt Fowler, disgusting, dirty scumbag that he is, um, deserves some details put into his story because although they, although they keep saying Birmingham University, he did. He spent most of his time and did most of his abuse while at Cambridge University, um, while studying at Cambridge University. He's now uh, at Birmingham. He was a postdoctoral researcher, um, but he's a climate change scientist. Um, so he's one of those. He's one of that crowd. And I ain't got much faith in them because I know the manure that they procure on a daily basis to get their um, conclusions. So I don't trust where he's come from. I don't trust what he does from the start off. I don't trust the fact that when he's on Twitter, he uses Matt Falder with one T. So that just flags him up straight away. I don't like the fact that they're, they're giving all the props to the UK security services for snagging this guy, when that's absolutely bullshit, because Brit police were alerted to him in 2013 by the FBI. So, they did, so the British police did jack shit until 2013. In fact, they even set up uh, online abuse hub, investigations hub at Birmingham University where he worked, yeah, that cost millions of pounds, that was collecting data about online paedophiles, and they had the, the UK's worst online paedophile right under their noses. Yeah, as usual, figures, yeah. So, man. It's just the same story over and over again, tied to the wrong people or, or in the vicinity of people that seem to be, that are supposedly fighting against this and there's paedophiles either in their ranks or right under their noses that they're not noticing. So until first, anyway, to 2013, they knew jack shit until so the FBI informed them and the FBI find, found out because someone had flagged up a, a site called Hurtcore. Hurtcore was a site that was founded by some, some disgusting dickhead from um, Australia. 
Now he's since been banged up in Melbourne. Now this dude's 22 years old, a nano a nano technician, or sorry, a nanotech student. 22 years old, and they ID'd him in 2014. Right now, this guy's the biggest of scumbags. I mean, this is this is a uh, Matthew Falder's idol, right? So, what this guy did, he set this site up called Hardcore Lux, uh, sorry, Hurt Hardcore, Hurt Lux, where paedophiles could go and share videos um, and talk about the disgusting things that they're into. Now, this dude was later named the King of Hurtcore because there was a, um, a an infamous video called Daisy's Destruction, um, and I won't go into the details of it, it's the most disgusting, depraved thing in the world. Um, it was that disgusting and depraved that it was being flogged on the internet for £10,000. Now, £10,000 a lot of money, so, so you've got to have a lot of money to buy that video. So that is another piece of evidence that suggests the paedophile ring is prolific within the rich and the elite amongst us. And we know that anyway, so that's, you know, it's an obvious point I'm making there. But, you know, £10,000 this video has been touted around. Um, Matthew Graham, known online as Lux, L-U-X, um, became synonymous with this video, became famous because of this video, because he was the one that released it to the public for free. Nice of him, eh? On um, on hurt looks, he, uh, yeah, dirty bastard. Um, so yeah, he released he released it for free and became a paedophile superstar celebrity. Um, but then his celebrity status obviously got him caught. Um, but that wasn't until he um, he I forgot the word. My mind's going blanks, blank. Sorry, he's, he's really, this story's really bugged me. Um, he got this Russian dude to kidnap, rape, kill, torture a four-year-old. Um, yeah, just disgusting. Um, that was one of the, one of the things that he did. One, um, and he's not bothered about the way he is. I mean, I'll put I'll put a link to the to a story in there that gives you his the, what he said in his interview, and he don't give a shit about what he's done. Um, so yeah, there's no remorse from him. He did the worst of the worst, and he supported the worst of the worst. Um, and he got 15 years, 15 years, that's it. So this dickhead's gonna be out in seven years time. And he's worse than some dude that we've just put away for 32 years. 22, so he's, he's, already, he's gonna, man, he's, he might not even be in his 30s yet when he comes out of prison. And then where's he gonna go and what's he gonna do? Well, we know what he's gonna do, he's gonna do the same again. Hmm? Unless he has his head chopped off. Um, yeah, so like I say, uh, this Daisy's destruction, like I say, this this uh, was was produced. This famous video that was sold for ten thousand dollars was produced by a company called Li uh, No Limits Fun, and that was run by a Peter Scully and Lizel Magalo, and they have both been jailed now, and they're in the Philippines. They're jailed up in the Philippines, so they're either going to have the worst of times or the best of times there, aren't they? And um, I've read. Uh, just read about the jails over there. You know, you you either pay to get the goodness, or if you know someone that can pay for you to have a comfortable time, your jail time will be sound. He'll probably get exactly what he got outside, inside. Um, but then again, if he hasn't, and I hope that he hasn't got the connections and the money to give him a comfortable time, I hope he has the worst of times. Yeah, because I've I've read about Thailand prisons and that lot, and they can be really bad. So I hope he's having that kind of time, eating rats. So uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, most of these images that are on this site are coming from the Philippines, Cambodia, and all these um, really poor countries um, that are now being manipulated. And we are being fooled into um, going to these places and helping out these orphanages and thinking that we're, um, we're going on holiday and helping. Um, but we're not when we're going to these orphanages on these... Um, on these excursions and gap yards and all that kind of stuff. When we go on a gap yard, yeah, don't go on a gap yard to um, to an orphanage because what you're doing is you're supporting paedophilia, um, um, forced adoption. Um, you're supporting it all by going there because what's happening is it's creating a huge revenue 
because you're giving your money to certain companies and the orphanages themselves um, you're giving them huge amounts of money and they're thinking well if we don't have any kids in this orphanage if we do our job and protect the kids and we don't end up having any kids in the orphanage we're not going to have a business and no one's going to be giving them any money money anymore and the country's going to be even poorer than it is now so there's you that that's the that's the process that we're all being fooled by so realize that yeah it's a sad fact but unfortunately um these kids are they're, they're told to perform so although you'll see pictures of your your aunties and your and your relatives going to thailand and teaching at these schools and washing down elephants and what have you and i don't know get yeah i've got family relatives that have done it themselves and i i don't want to spoil it for them by telling them but it's it's obvious that that's that's going that this is going to happen you're going to go to these places you're going to give these people money and they're going to procure more kids to fill these orphanages up or sorry yeah well to fill these orphanages up um yeah and they're just getting stolen from families yeah for profit so let's wise up all right it's all a learning curve for everyone mm -hmm. and as calf Kaneki said in his video yeah, yeah, that i seen the other day none of, no, none of us are perfect yeah i'm not saying we're anything like these dirty bastards i'm talking about today but none of us are perfect and we're all everyone makes mistakes and we're all it's all a learning curve for everyone so do you know what i mean if you've got a holiday planned to wherever yeah be aware of it be aware of what's going on don't go into these places um enlighten people that are going to these places that are thinking of going to these places because they're not what they seem so anyway like i say the, the rabbit hole has been blown wide open today um because i've been having a look at this dude birmingham and uh, what's going on in birmingham the people involved uh like i said the taser thing the tasering kids they found um that's just that's just just yeah well, there's not a word for it is there it's not a it's not a disgrace it's not disgusting it's not a scandal there's not a word for what they're doing to the children or what's being allowed to be done to children by absolute sick bastards um so i won't try and find a word for it onwards halfway through i nip down to the store shop get some cigarettes and on the way back grab the paper now in the newspaper which is why this blue wired are open and why I've done a video because I can't possibly write all this. I'd have no finger on me, on me, on my fingers and thumbs anymore. I have no fingers on my fingers and thumbs. That was wrong, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll have no skin on my fingers and thumbs because there'd be too much to type and I'd be tapping too much. All right, that was the joke that I've just ruined. Okay, <laughs> so I'll I'll laugh at that one <laughs> instead of you. Um, okay, so the the um the story that i found in the metro is this one mp joe cox's family back widower over sex assault claims right now normally i would watch over this kind of story because the sex assault claims that are coming out in the mainstream media are just to dilute um and take our attention away from the paedophile rings um the, the uk abuse inquiry that should be centering on lord janna instead of centering on false victims like Nick so it would normally just wash over me this one would because like I say it's just to like dilute it it's all part of the uh, black dress brigade and all their um, antics to take our attention away so I wouldn't normally go near this but it had the name Joe Cox in it so that raises a flag with me because anything with Joe Cox in it unfortunately the lady um, was killed by an apparent racist um, protester in the UK a while ago a few years ago she did so MP Labour MP Joe Cox um, now she ran a charity and she still runs a charity um, and she was been she's very loved by the UK the people of the UK apparently now me myself with all due respect I don't like the charity that she represented mm -hmm. yeah I'm not gonna talk bad of her because she's not around to defend herself but the charity she chose to um, to represent 
was one that gave to a gave to an organisation called the White Helmets. Uh, the White Helmets are well known now to be linked to, to terrorism. I mean, they're just a, they're a splinter cell, basically. They're, um, yeah, they're terrorists. Anyway, they always seem to pop up in the wrong places at the wrong time, and that's where Joe Cox was asking everyone to send their money. Um, I didn't. I don't like that. That's not good. Nah. At the time, I looked into that. There was obviously Joe Cox's husband. That was the more dodgier one of the two. Now uh, him, he's the he, he's a, he appeared then to be a little bit, meh, you know what I mean, kind of a, a bit of a, a businessman, yeah. But we're not too much dirt on him. But just he, he was a businessman. I think he was something to do with banking or something like that as well. Um, but just one of them, a suit, as I like to call him, yeah. Um. So this dude is now in the paper. Um, he's, he's carried on um, the um, the charity in the name of his his wife that passed away, that was murdered. Um, so he seemed like he was being an honourable guy, right? Now this has come out today, and it don't surprise me now because I was suspicious of this guy in the first place. But it says here, um, oh, here's the article, so you can see what I'm reading. There you go. And I'll put that to the camera so if you want you can pause it I don't know if the picture's good enough to be honest but there you go there you go you had a chance to kind of look at the first bit now you can listen to me reading it so it says the sister of murdered MP Joe Cox has vowed to support her widower after sex after sexual assault allegations from his past have resurfaced right now as usual they try they give him a they give him and the person who's defended him all the voice in this and they give them the centre stage to to refute the allegations um, and to dilute them by giving false apology um, but what the claim actually was what needs highlighting is the, is what's actually claimed against this guy because uh, you know, what he's done um, and what he's probably still doing see while he was while he was married to his wife that he's honouring now he was trying to shag everything going um, and he was trying to trying to do it while he was working for a charity, um, save the children. So, um, while he was there, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll read this bit. I'll read this bit um, because I get a little bit too emotional when I talk about this stuff. So here we go. Kim Ledbetter said brother-in-law Brendan Cox had done had done the right thing by admitting inappropriate behaviour while he worked at Save the Children in 2015. The dad of two denies preying on two women while wed to the late politician, but said, I made mistakes and behaved in a way that caused hurt and offence. Yeah, it did cause hurt and offence, mate. Yeah, and I'll t yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. He has quit two charities set up in memory of his late wife. More, more in common... Um, more in common and the Joe Cox Foundation. They're the two charities. More in common... Because uh, yeah, sorry, more more in common, which is probably something to do with common purpose, uh, and the Joe Cox Foundation over the allegations. So he's another. He's working at two other charities. He was working at um, Save the Children as well, but now he's not because he's a dirty bastard. Um, and anyway, following his allegation, follow his following his resignation, Miss Ledbetter said, "It is it is another very difficult day for our family." The last 20 months have been a constant roller coaster of emotions which we are dealing with on a daily basis. So it's a nice sob story for her, yeah? So let's let's get, get some sympathy going for these lot now. Um, her priority will be to look after the couple's two children. So let's mention the children, bring the kids in, more sympathy, blah, blah, blah. Right, sorry, let me just get to the point. Her statement came after it was alleged Mr. Cox, 39, forced himself on a woman in a bar at the at Harvard University by grabbing her hips, pulling her hair, and forcing his thumb into her mouth in a sexual way, right? What the fuck? Who does that? I, I don't know, yeah? Call me a gentleman, yeah? But that's not the way I kind of um. <laughs> oh man, what is wrong with this fucking world? It's not how you caught a lady, okay? <laughs> oh, they need to kick their ass at least. Um, anyway, police police filed her complaint as assault and battery. 
rather than a sexual assault, which is what it was. But she told them to drop the case as she feared repercussions, according to the Mail on Sunday. So it weren't followed up. It's not like this guy had to kind of defend himself and defended himself successfully. It just weren't investigated because she was scared, probably because he probably threatened her afterwards, yeah, not to go to the police. So there we go. Um, this is the kind of guy he is. Mr. Cox said yesterday her claims were a massive exaggeration. So he ain't even sorry for what he's done. He don't give a shit. Um, there's no remorse to what he's done. He just wants to make this woman out to be a liar. So he wants to cause her even more harm. Just like Mr. Fowder. Yeah. Same kind of personality, maybe. Um, because here it says, it is claimed... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I've skipped a little bit. Mr. Cox... Um, oh, no, no, no. That's the massive exaggeration bit. Sorry for this. Right, it goes on to say, weeks before the alleged attack, he is reported to have drunkenly harassed a female employee at, Sa at Savvy, uh, at Savvy, the children, oh, oh my God, <laughs> sorry, I'll look a right fool there, um, at Sa <laughs> Savvy, <laughs> thought it was a restaurant then, a London restaurant, a posh one. <laughs> Oh man, right, I'll just get this over and done with. Weeks before the alleged attack, he is reported to have drunkenly harassed a female employee at Save the Children. Not Savvy the Children, Save the Children, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Um, at Save the Children, at this charity. Um, it is claimed he pushed her up against the wall by the throat and said, I want to F blah 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 you. Yeah? Um, he left his charity role shortly afterwards. What an absolute scumbag this bloke is, yeah. Um, now, this has led me to a, to a few suspicions. Because if this guy is such a scumbag and he can like pin women up against a wall by the throat, who don't want him to come onto them, yeah, because both of these people have reported him. So, you know, don't think this is like a, um, a Hollywood kind of, spur of the moment love thing no it ain't it ain't no love thing no it's a dirty best of thing yeah this guy's just a just a probably a, I, don't know if I, won't, I won't cast aspersions I won't say what I don't know yeah the guy just assaults women that's what he does he assaults women he grabs them by the throat he pulls their hair he sticks their thumb in their mouth yeah tells them he wants to fuck them okay nice bloke yeah nice bloke all round right so this nice bloke all round what if he's more involved in these charities than his wife ever was hmm what if he was using his dead wife as a cover for these charities um, and using her profile as a, a Labour MP uh, as a as a as a, a figurehead for these charities when he was actually behind these charities. Now, we're all learning what charities are all about through Oxfam. They're showing us what registered official charities are really about. So, my suspicions, and I'm not, these are just allegations, I'm not saying they're true, but I'm just saying, if he's got a dark heart and a dark soul and he can do that to women and he don't give a shit and he works in charities and we've seen people with dark hearts who also work in charities that go on to abuse kids um, if he's that kind of person not a child abuser but if he's a dark hearted person and he's doing dark hearted things through, his char through these charities that maybe he could be running under the guise of Joe Cox then if Joe Cox was to find something out about what he was doing that would jeopardize her career as an MP as a as what she thought was a good person and she thought her husband's ways were jeopardizing um, her career because they obviously weren't in a happy relationship because he was shagging around or he was trying to well he wasn't shagging around because he was just assaulting women all over the place but he wasn't he obviously wasn't happy in the relationship so he was um, so th th it's just not a happy it doesn't seem like a, a, a normal happy loving relationship is what I'm saying if she was to find something out 
and question him about it and then go further and find something and be suspicious of him and find more stuff out then maybe maybe if it was if this was all a movie maybe a, a good storyline would be that in the movie he killed her or he organised killing her because she was about to expose him that'd be a good movie plot won't it hmm funny funny well not funny just intriguing um so yeah just mull that one over mull that one over because that just came to me while i was reading that um like i say he looks the type doesn't he hey? so i wonder if they'll ever make a movie about this guy where he is running the charities but using his wife as a um as a head figure I'm sorry as a figurehead for these companies for these charities and then she finds out something about him in the movie and then he has he has her killed hmm? and uses his, his business connections to have her killed uh, think about that one that'd be a good movie wouldn't it so anyway well that's that that was just part of the reason why I wanted to do a video because there was that story to tag on to the, the horrible bit at the start. Um, also at the top of this page, Oxfam Boss. There we go. Oxfam Boss. Let disgraced worker go quietly. Well we know about that. That's been in the in the media a lot. Uh, I think there was three of them all in all. Two of them got suspended. Or oh, three or four. Two of them got suspended. I think one or two we're allowed to resign and then go on to work for charity for more charities abusing more kids um, and the lady that did that was Dame Barbara Stocking Dame Barbara Stocking sorry just Dame Barbara Stocking um, another one with royal title or dignitary whatever you call it she's a dame it's like all these that have been knighted and, get, and on the honours list um, man the honours list the, the team photo for the honours list must be some scary shit. <laughs> Rolf Harris, Cyril Smith, Janna, Savile. I mean, they've all had honours in one way or another. And now this dame that's been employing paedophiles all over the world and allowing them to rape kids. Um, wow, what a photo that would be. Stick that on your mantelpiece and keep the kids away from the fire. Because that, man, that would, that, that's a Halloween picture, believe me. Of all those lot lined up with their awards. No thanks. Yeah, I can see why people turn them down now. I can see why some celebrities turn them down. And good on that actor last night for not wearing a re not wearing a black dress. Good on her. I've seen that on the news today. I forgot which, which actress. Uh, sorry, not actor, 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 actress. I forgot which actress it was. Um, funny lady, uh, middle aged, but she didn't wear a black dress. She wore um, it had black flecks in it, but it was it was a colourful dress. And she made a statement saying, I think all she was allowed to say was, I don't like going by the norm. Um, I don't like being told what to do or something like that. Um, basically, she see through, sees through the black dress brigade as well and sees it for what it is and didn't want to be um, part of that sh that community. Um, so good on her. Well done. Props to you. There's not many of you doing it. Um, so I wanted to highlight that bit. Um, yeah, another thing I want to highlight in the Metro as well. Man, the Black Dress Brigade, which is absolute load of garbage, right? <laughs> it seems, it seems now, now they're having to wear black dresses. Yeah, it's, it's gaining away a bit. Yeah, I, I know, I know this. I know, I know Harvey Weinstein's been raping everyone, and there's probably loads more out there that have been raping all the other female actresses and young male actresses, actors. I know there's probably loads more, loads more producers and directors that do it that we're all keep that they're all keeping quiet about, and they've all worked with and took money from, and probably sent other actresses to them to be abused, saying, "Well, that's just the way it is, you know, just go along with it." Yeah, um, the black dress thing's getting in the way now, because in the metro it says, "Times up," but not for glamour. Yeah, because the hashtag is "Times up." Yeah, times up hashtag. Yeah, that means you really care if you give a times up hashtag and wear black. Wow, if you wear black and give a, a times up hashtag, man, go and work for Oxfam because you are you're one of a gang. 
you're one of the good guys, right? But this article is all about how they've managed to look good while wearing black. And that is on the second page of the, of the Metro. Um, the, the front page of the Metro has got uni fees, unfair and poor value. I mean, they haven't mentioned Nick Fowler today. Not at all. No, that's not front page news. No, they want, ter they want Theresa May, the Prime Minister, saying that uni fees are unfair. Yeah, y Theresa May is going to come to your rescue. <laughs> yeah, radio. <laughs> and that was front page. The second page was the Baptist thing. How was it? The Baptist and the Black Dress Brigade. Um, yeah, and just saying how good they looked because that's what matters. How good they looked in their black dresses. Hmm. So they're not even mentioning why they're wearing black dresses now. So now we've diluted the situation from Pizzagate. Well. Really, it's from Savile to Pizzagate, from Pizzagate to Weinstein, from Weinstein to black dresses, from black dresses to looking good. What? Hello? Hello? Can we reverse and come back to Savile, yeah, and finish off that story? because we're missing a lot, we're missing a lot. And then we can go on to Pizzagate, yeah? And then we can go on to Weinstein, and then we can get the rest of them. Man, yeah, let's get out of here. yeah I'm getting wound up, big time. So anyway, video's rattling on too long, I've just seen it, it's like 32 minutes. Um, people have got shit to do, I know, I have, and I've got to write all this up now at the bottom, <laughs> or some of it at least. Um, yeah, at Family Protection, spot on good dudes can't fault them uh, top lot the best on steaming i'd say um hey yeah anyway I won't, I won't i won't start getting all sentimental about that um profile of uh, uh, profile i bumped into lately was um the dude's name i'll link him at the bottom there's a couple of new profiles i've seen uh, this week um, and they've yeah yeah they're real cool dudes real cool dude well, one one lad one 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 girl um, but fantastic profiles new people on my list on my following list um, and I'll highlight them at the bottom because I reckon you'll you'll get a lot of use out of them they seem pretty cool dudes um, so yeah have a look at the bottom check some new people out uh, improve improve and increase the community of Steam it cause that's what it's all about yeah get out there make comments. Give up votes, re-steam, yeah, be good, be nice, be peaceful.